Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Daily Mark Report brought to you by Mike Bjork. Today is Wednesday, June 13th, also Fed Day today. we got the big day today, so we'll touch on that here in a minute. Uh, first, we'll start off with the uh, economic calendar, and today we only have uh, inflation news, and that's on the wholesale side of things, which is called the Producer Price Index, also known as the PPI, so for the month of May, 0.3, and it jumped up 0.3. 5%. This is probably the highest we've seen in about seven years. So this is a pretty big jump for inflation on the wholesale side of things. Now, when you strip out the food and energy, we get what they call the core PPI. So back in April, it went up 0.2%. Forecast is supposed to be remaining in the same range at 02 and it jumped up to 0.3%. So again, a uh, pretty hot number here. So we like yesterday, we had the CPI number that came out a little warmer than we probably would have liked. But uh, again, it's... Um, you know, it's starting to show that the wholesale th side of things, you know, it doesn't weigh as much as the consumer side of things, primarily because even though costs go up sometimes on the whole side, it doesn't always get moved over to the consumer. And we're more consumed, uh, concerned about the consumer side of things with it. So that way we have the cons CPI as well as the PCE uh, indexes that we can look at and have a little higher are a little bit more weighted in terms of relevance in the economy here. Uh, we do look at the PPI, but again, they weigh more uh, on the consumer side of things here. So let's kind of jump into this a little bit further. We got the uh, headline news. Stock market is up. Uh, basically, again, uh, the markets are primarily waiting for the FOMC announcement today. So by 11, between 11 and 1130 uh, Pacific Standard Time, uh, Jerome Powell will give his announcement. It's expected that they're going to raise rates about another quarter percent. Uh, they're going to look heavily at the wording, of course, and they're going to be looking at the dot plot. Uh, so they're going to see if, you know, kind of get a better gauge as to the uh, potential rate hikes further. So there's now September, they think there'll be another rate hike. The third one this year will be September, but that uh, the, the wild card will be the one in December if there might be one in December. Right now, that uh, projections are about 50 50 on that one, but with this higher you know, inflation numbers that we're getting later, you know, so far, uh, it could lead to a fourth one this year. So just be prepared. And then uh, after today, we got a couple of uh, global ones. So we'll be prepared this week uh, for some uh, global uh, ones. Uh, big one tomorrow will be uh, ECB will be giving their announcement on their policies, and they're expected to start unwinding their purchases of their mortgage-backed securities or their uh, treasuries over there. Uh, you know, as we had our, you know, the QE here, they had theirs, and they were still purchasing, uh, and which we have done, stopped purchasing for a while now, and now actually – we are actually, un the Fed is actually unloading those or reducing their uh, portfolio of uh, treasuries and, and uh, mortgage-backed securities, whereas they still have been building up. So we'll have to, we'll wait for that uh, tomorrow. And then uh, Japan will be giving theirs, Bank of Japan will be giving their announcement on Friday. So let's take a look here at the bond market, see how it's looking, shaping up. Right now, we're pretty much about in line where we left off yesterday. It's up just basically three basis points. Uh, we got the 25-day moving average, so we're not too far from that. Uh, historically speaking, uh, you know, usually when there's a Fed hike, you know, we've seen a lot of times uh, bonds react in a positive manner, and that's primarily due to uh, every time the Fed raises hi uh, rate hikes, every time there's a Fed rate hike, it helps uh, bonds primarily due to the uh, fighting inflation. It's a it's a tool that they use to fight inflation, and that's the arch enemy for mortgage-backed securities or bonds, as it erodes value over time uh, of the length of the uh, uh, of the bond there. So that usually helps us out for long-term rates. Uh, but today we'll have to kind of wait and see. Uh, we've had a few instances where it's kind of gone the opposite direction, only because the market kind of take off, and that was only because they're competing with stocks, and that money just kind of flowed into stocks. So the stock market, you know, uh, took it more as a positive nature. So here's the, excuse me, the um, 10 year treasury is still keeping intact here. We're uh, still not able to uh, penetrate this on 25 day moving average. We're down about 2.95 right now. It's kind of stuck in this uh, sideways pattern between 25 and 50 day moving average. And if uh, that 25 can hold, it will help out mortgage backed securities, which and thus help out interest rates. So right now, interest rates are about the same as where we left off yesterday. So there's no, uh, no change in uh, interest rates today. Now, stay tuned. Again, we got the Feds releasing their minutes. Uh, I'll be putting out some uh, updates on that later today, as well as, you know, um, throughout the day of the market close and everything. But um, come over to Twitter if you want to see those updates. Find me at Mike Bjork and follow me there. And uh, hopefully see you guys there. If not, I'll see you guys tomorrow here at the um, 
on the report here. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.